The word traditional gets tossed around in blacksmithing circles quite a bit. But what does that really mean? Well, when it comes right down to it, most of us are going to have our own take on what is and isn't traditional and whether or not that's even important in life. Some people use it to justify their own approach to blacksmithing or to condemn somebody else's approach to blacksmithing because they disagree with the way they define the word traditional. So the definition of tradition is the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation or the fact of being passed on this way. So what does that really tell us about traditional blacksmithing? Well, one, it's generation to generation. It isn't one specific focus. They did it this way in the very beginning of the Iron Age and therefore that's the only thing that is traditional blacksmithing. It's things that have evolved from that point to the present day are all part of the current tradition of blacksmithing. One of the best things that I've ever seen is from George Dixon, and he put it on the cover of all of the traditional metalsmith magazines, which I wish were still being published, but they're long out of print. There aren't really that many of them. But if you ever get a hold of these, they're a wealth of information on traditional blacksmithing, especially as it applied to the Samuel Yellen shop. But his statement is, blacksmithing is not defined by time period or motif. Blacksmithing is defined by process alone. So what is that process? Well, that process is forging. There are lots of ways to make a decorative iron fence or an iron gate or a candle holder or something like that. But forging is a little bit unique. It's not the same as fabricated work that is cut and welded, or even if the fabricated work has scrolls that are bent by a hydraulic forming machine that bends all the scrolls the same, but doesn't do any work to it beforehand. There's no tapers, there's no fishtails, there's no half pennies or bolt-in scrolls. They're just a cut-off piece of bar bent into a scroll shape, and you can usually tell they were machine done and not done by a blacksmith. So that tells you a lot about what is and isn't traditional. Now, I suppose I've always considered myself a bit of a traditionalist, although I'm not married to the idea of tradition. I like punched holes with mortise and tenon joinery, hot collars, rivets, forge welds, all of that kind of stuff that is obviously done by a blacksmith and is not generally done by other trades that do similar styles or similar motifs. I've known some people that like to define tradition by time period. They say the old timers didn't have power hammers, so therefore, if you use a power hammer, you're not doing traditional work. Power hammers are still forging, and the old timers actually had power hammers in a lot of cases. And that's something that has been adapted into traditional smithing over the years, so it's really not outside the scope of being traditional. And you can use a power hammer to forge hot iron and forge tenons to forge collars to shape the ends of scrolls before you bend them. That does not take away the traditional aspect. As far as I'm concerned, you're welcome to your own opinion on the subject, and everybody's gonna have a little bit different take. I've even had people say, well, you're not a traditional smith if you have electric lights. I think that's really taking things too far. Electric lights don't change the work you're doing. It doesn't change the way you do the work. That's more about historical context. And if that's what you're interested in is historical recreation, I want to create the same kind of work under the same conditions in the same environment as this group of people at a particular time and in a particular place. If it's historical, you don't get to do the work that was being done all over planet Earth at that time. Maybe you're just doing Viking Age work, so you got to do what was common for that time period. Just doing this one thing that's what you got to stick to to have historical accuracy. If you're working in a living history site, for instance, like Colonial Williamsburg, where Peter Ross was the master smith, their work was very much restricted to the type of work and the items and the methods that were done there. So much so that they wore the same clothing that the smiths would have used there, used the same kind of tools, the same materials. That meant no safety glasses, no hearing protection, because that was not historically accurate. And yes, that work fits the traditional definition because the process is defining the work, but I think that's a very narrow, limited part of tradition. I think tradition spans thousands of years of the art of blacksmithing. Anyways, it's just something to think about. I'm not here to tell you what to do in your shop. You get to decide what to do with your tools and your skills in your own shop. You do things the way you want to, whether it's traditional or not. And as far as I'm concerned, you can use traditional techniques on contemporary work.